This is RBC 2021-16 GW Farms. It is located at 5999 Valdale Road. It is currently RA. The request is for R1. It will have well and septics. Uh, and this involves 98.95 acres. Mr. Dillard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, this was requested to take the property from its current residential agricultural zoning to R1 low density residential in order to be subdivided at a greater density of approximately 73 lots. According to the applicant's uh, letter of intent, the preliminary site plan is attached for your consideration with proposed four bedroom homes with two and three car garages and average house sizes of 1,900 square feet or more. Of the proposed lots, approximately 20 or greater than one acre minimum and a community pool common area is proposed within the development. Subject property does possess road frontage on Valdale Road. Overall, planning found the request inconsistent with the comprehensive plan. And the TRC reviewed the application and noted any development would require soil evaluation by the Department of Public Health or well and septic, and adherence to supplemental engineering standards for properties containing or adjacent to wetlands. The Planning Commission recommended denial of the request by a split vote of 7 to 2. You'll note here on the proposed cycle after that, I believe lot 60 in the upper, uh, upper third here. Middle cul de sac is the one proposed for the development of a community pool. In case there's any questions for Mr. Dill. You said that you've done the uh, calculations of 20 lots or larger than one acre? Yes, sir, based upon this preliminary site. Any other questions? Okay. Hearing none, then we'll move into the public hearing portion of the meeting. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Yes, sir. My name is Chuck Dunman. I live at 5930 Valdale Road. I live directly across from the proposed development. Um, I'm not going to waste your time on traffic count. I think we can all agree by now, even using Mr. Griner's uh, mathematical formula for population growth, with traffic count 3916, 4950, and 19, is probably 6,000 by now. Um, 73 one acre lots. An acre is roughly 200 feet by 200 feet. State law dictates that a well cannot be within 50 feet of a septic tank, cannot be within 100 feet of a drain field. A septic tank drain field cannot be within 10 feet of a building foundation or property line or within 15 feet of an embankment, stream, or wetland. So that's going to be some interesting mathematical calculations taking place there on that property. I'm also curious if the perk test is going to be done on all 73 lots prior to construction. Because uh, I'm wondering how those tests would react if, if you had active drain fields on adjacent lots. And obviously me being on the downhill side of this development, we all know what goes down here. Mm -hmm. So I have a concern from that from an environmental standpoint. Yep. Stormwater. Stormwater law dictates that a development cannot force more water onto an adjacent property than what currently existed pre-development up to a 25-year storm. A 25-year storm is 7.68 inches of rainfall in a 24-hour period. There are two drainage points for the entire 98 acres. One goes through my neighbor's property and into a five-acre pond and a 12-acre pond that four of us property owners share. The other drainage point goes through my property. When I bought this land in 1994 and went through the DNR permitting process to build a 12-acre pond, a 36-inch drainage structure was used to control the elevation of our pond. Um, and, uh, and, and also, I used a 36-inch pipe to go through to access my property across the other drainage ditch that goes through my property. When Valdale Road was widened a few years back, that pipe was replaced with a larger diameter pipe without a downstream study being done. But so what I want to tell you is that um, when the engineer looks at the retention pond and needed to develop this property, they, by law, have to do what is called a downstream analysis, which means he's got to see what is downstream from where he's turning this water loose, which means now he has to use the 36-inch pipe as his control. He can't use what's at the road. No. Um, the reason this is the law is not just the design criteria. I want to remind you, this is a lifetime commitment. 
This is a maintenance law. This law exists as long as the development is there. So if this pond ever silts in and it can no longer retain the 25-year storm in accordance with law, whoever owns that development at that point in time, whether it's the county or the developer, somebody's got to dig out the pond. So I just want you to be aware of that scenario. The comprehensive plan. I came to the public Mary hearing a couple of weeks back, and I must say I learned a lot from both sides. Mr. Ornstein, you stated that everyone wants to live in the north end of the county. I understand your statement, but is that fair to the current landowners? Why does a potential buyer's wants take precedent over current homeowners and homestead? Your job is hard, but it should never be hard to be fair. I have a suggestion that will eliminate most of your issues with zoning and can be done with somewhat of a clear conscience. Draw a circle three miles around the city of Alloc to city limits and start your development, which is what the comprehensive plan basically says. And when you're within 90% of development, expand your circle. This way you're impacting all taxpayers of Lowndes County equally, and that would be fair. The way, this way it doesn't look like you're overburdening one particular section, sector of the county. Mr. Griner, if the population numbers are going to be where you predict, then this report will have to go in this direction at some point. Why not now? The high comprehensive plan calls for urban development to stay close to urban areas and to maintain and protect the integrity of our rural areas. A 73 lot subdivision is an urban development trying to be placed in the middle of a rural area. We live eight miles outside of the Valdosta city limits and one mile south of the Cook County line. How far do I have to be out to maintain my rural status? Please be cautious of the precedence you can set tonight when all of your checks and balances the county has implemented encourage you to deny this request. Thank you for your time. One, one question.
trying to do the business as we need to do, and I would appreciate it. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition to this request? John, you were halfway down the aisle before the I even asked. So is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition to this request? All right, John. State your name and address for the record. Hi, right, John Quarterman, 6565 Quarterman Road. And I got to say, I've been gratified to see the Planning Commission and the staff are recommending against this rezoning. Because this, is, this proposal is one logical outcome of what the previous commission and previous staff started back in 2007 when the commission rezoned from Nelson Hill and then ran water explicitly up Valdell to Nelson Hill. Since then, the commission and the staff have been approving more subdivisions, pushing the water lines farther up, paving roads to connect the subdivisions. And what's going to happen when the septic tanks start to fail, if, if you unfortunately approve this? Then we'll hear an outcry, we've got to have county water extended all the way to this subdivision, which will put further pressure on all the landowners nearby because their taxes will go up. And um, <clears throat> I can tell you something else that will happen if you plunk a subdivision like this in the middle of an agricultural and farming area, because I've got one grandfathered in next to my west field, which we planted in longleaf pine also back in 2007. And what we get is every time we burn those trees, somebody from the subdivision calls the county fire department. Get used to it. I'm going to call them again. I'm going to burn again this winter. And they dump their trash over the fence into my trees because they think it's just empty land. And they trespass, and they leave trash, and they poach, and they run their four wheelers. That's what you're going to get if this thing gets approved. This is why character areas matter. This is why the subdivision should be denied. This is why the character area should stay the same as it is. This is why there's no need for an an extra million dollar water main to close a loop that's already closed. And this is why the county commission should be looking forward to preserve the rural character of the rural parts of the, of the county, not just for this generation of these people, but for their descendants seven, seven generations on. So please deny this result. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. I'm Richard Coleman, 109 South of Ashley Street. I'm here, um, I represent GW Farms, and um, I'll try to be brief as I can. Um, as we said, it's 98 acres. And of course, there'll be 72 acres likely to be developed. In the, in, the, in the front of the property, there's approximately 25 acres that will be left. And it'll be, of course, um, it's a uh, uh, detention pond and will be, as well, a, uh, it's undisturbed wetland. So those will be there next to the detention pond, and that's in the front. Um, now, there also will be 72 lots and not 73 lots in the back which is lot 60 will be a pool area dedicated, so that lot will be taken out. Um, I will mention a little bit about the traffic on uh, Valdell Road. When I attended the Planning Commission meeting, I did mention also that this property is on the west side of the road, and therefore at least when traffic turns coming out of the subdivision, it will be turning to the right. It won't be crossing uh, the road, at least going to work in the mornings. Um, the traffic count, I had mentioned at the Planning Commission meeting as well that there was a, that the traffic count was 3,000 with a 6,000 capacity, but I called uh, and, and, and uh, got a lot of objection to that, and I called Chad McLeod uh, and just to find out exactly what that was, and that is actually 4,260 uh, uh, vehicles a day, and he explained to me that this 6,000 capacity is not really capacity is not the right word. He, he said what Wayne explained to me was that 6,000 is simply a classification and that's a classification that the county would use then to say okay uh, we've got to do something with this uh, road. We've either got to uh, uh, 
uh, make some turn lanes or widen it or stop lights or whatever. And of course, it is a it is a major. Uh, he explained to me this a lot of things. A major uh, collector arterial road is what it is. So so it's not a it's not a little country road anymore. I don't believe. Um, and of course, it is moving toward development. Lowndes County is moving that way. It will just be, even if you turn down this development, it'll be a matter of time before uh, that road will need some, will, will reach that capacity. I think everybody agrees with that. Um, and if you take 4,260 vehicles and you consider two cars for each house, and I'm just thinking out loud, you, you got two cars in each house, and each each car goes to Valdosta every day and comes home every day. If you say that, and you got uh, 144 added to the traffic count, and if you divide that into 4,260, that's a 3.38% increase in the traffic on Valdale Road, which is rather minimal. Uh, that's a conclusion. It appears to be rather minimal. Uh, I also discussed with Chad the intersection at Valdell and North and Valdell and North Alasta Road, where where the traffic comes and, and had, you know stopped by that stoplight. And he he said that they're working on that and been working with DOT and, and you all probably already know that that there's going to instead of that one lane going across over to uh, uh, 41041, they're going to they're trying to figure a way to make it turn to the left. So there'll be two turning lanes going into Valdosta. And he also said that right now they're just working on, they've got to figure out how long the lanes need to be or whether there's a median or in, in the budget and all of that that we don't consider, getting prices, et cetera. Um, as far as the water uh, runoff was an issue, of course the detention pond and the natural area is intended to keep the water within the subdivision. And it is right uh, I have order. Um, um, yeah, no comments. And if you look at that map, it does, it is kind of in the middle. In other words, the houses are all built, will be developed around that, with that, uh, coming that direction. At any rate, uh, so actually, I mean, if you if you if you could actually maybe make an argument that the subdivision may may solve some of the border runoff issues on some, any neighbor's property, um, we've heard about septic tanks and and I didn't hear it tonight, but we had heard earlier that those septic tanks may contaminate neighbors' wells. All of that, and certainly uh, the county. Uh, um, we'll give you about another half a minute. Okay. All right. So we tend to do that. I'll make a last uh, a couple, of, one, two quick points, and that is the, uh, as everybody knows, the inventory for housing is very low in Lowndes County, and right now I was told it's 60 percent lower than normal, and that uh, certainly we need housing. Uh, it's a great need at Moody, um, and uh, we understand that the, uh, of course, is another. Uh, thing that I'd like to say very quickly and that is we understand jobs are important in Lowndes County and of course if you, you, you've got a lot of jobs that go to the subcontractors. If, when houses are built you've got painters and you've got framers and you've got all of these people, electricians and everybody else everybody's aware of. And, and in, in this particular case the contractor that will build uh, these houses has built uh, 565 houses in the past years with 96 million spent in Lowndes County. And that's all right, sir. I'll start. Right, thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Thank you, sir. I'm Steve Doherty. I've been listening for some owner or land owners around their site. And I is something to think about. I know that. I lived in an area, I live north of Moody. Moody is pretty like everything. But one thing that I can stand here and say, or we don't say Lowndes County, stop growing, don't grow no more. 
We cannot stop Lowndes County from growing. It's going to grow. What are we going to do as people in Lowndes County? We're going to use our head. I've heard individuals say about water and sewer. I think, in my opinion, my son is a builder, licensed builder. I think our uh, secretary uh, down here, the crew of secretary, well, well, and all, it does that. I think they do an excellent job. They go to each side and they do a study on it. They, I don't know what that study is. They know what it is. They give you the approval or disapproval of that study. That is something to find out. If there's something wrong with that land, then they're going to deny putting well and second out there. All right? Let's let them make that decision or I don't know what it is. I can't stand here and say, hey, no, this can't be done. They know. Let's do what Lowndes County needs. Lowndes County is growing. Let people have jobs, let people work, and let's not stop Lowndes County for a second. Hey, anyone can say, in my area, I invite anyone to come to my area and look at it. I've got 20 acres of land and I'll stand here today. I'll give it to somebody if they want to build on it. I'll give it to them. And I ain't no joke. I want to see Lowndes County grow, and we need to be wise about it. And open up some subdivisions because there's people I have called today. Someone's coming in Lowndes County to build 100 houses this coming year. And what are you going to do? Stay out of Lowndes County? No, invite it to come in because we need money. Appreciate it. Okay, we'll have one more speaker. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of this request? Anyone that would like to speak in favor? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing portion of the meeting. And commissioners, I'll turn it over to you for your consideration. Chad, is, is um, Coppins Road being paid up there too? Is it the part that's on the West, west side of it is that way. Yes, sir. Sir, so I have a question. I know the one that was in the form. I was wondering if Mr. DeMar could just hang on just a minute. That's good. That's all you need? Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mr. Sign still has for sale for the sign up there. Is it pending this? Is it pending this approval or have anyone else made an offer on the property? That's what I was going to ask. I do not know that. I mean, that way. Did anyone else make an offer on the property? Yes. 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 Just hold on. the marks. We don't need to get in back in with. No, I we closed the public portion of the meeting. I want to know, basically, had anybody else been given an opportunity to purchase the property? Well, I think it has been for sale for quite a while. So yeah, once had the opportunity to buy it, I think you can certainly assume that. Because I, 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 I don't know, I don't know what's buy or for what purpose is what I've been trying to do. Yeah, I, I can't answer that, and probably the owner is the only one that can really answer. That. And I don't think the owner is here. We haven't heard. Yes, chairman. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. Do we have a second? We have a motion and a second. I'll call the vote. 
We'll do it by a show of hands. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Okay, it's three. In opposition, same. Three two. Three two. Three two. Okay, so the motion carries. All right, we'll move on then to agenda.